Hi, my name is Zach Winkleman. I'm a PhD student at Indiana State University. I'm going to discuss the controversial issue of public health regarding my uh, disparities for minority populations. In the United States, most of our population is actually white, with three quarters of that being it, um, making it a majority, ma uh, majority white population. And additionally, 17% of the population is Hispanic or Latino, uh, making that the only ethnicity group uh, actually measured from the census data, but creating a disparity between all the groups in the United States. When we begin to define minorities, uh, the race versus ethnicity comes up. So race has to deal with a obvious physical characteristic, such as skin color. In the United States, minority groups are, include uh, Blacks or African Americans, American Indian and Alaskan, uh, Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, and Eastern Asian. Other subordinate groups uh, include things like religion, gender, uh, where religion would be Mormons, Catholics, and um, Muslims would fit into the minority group, and where women would fit into the minority group for gender. In addition, uh, we have ethnic groups which are based more on culture, such as Puerto Ricans and Colombians. Someone can both be a racial and a cultural minority, such as a black Hispanic. If we look at the social determinants of health, income, education, unemployment, their physical environment, and social support networks all come into play uh, in regards to what uh, sets someone up to have a, a gap. If we look at the pay scale on the right, um, black Americans earn almost $20,000 less than their white counterparts. Uh, this is uh, similar to gender gaps where women typically earn less than men. Uh, this also uh, plays into unemployment. The national average in 2016 was 4.9%. If we look at the racial groups, uh, whites were at 4.3%, so below the national average, while blacks were almost double the national average at 8.4%. The physical environment is also very important, that socioeconomic status comes into where some people live, and this actually impacts the way education is given. Uh, the CDC warns that a a uh, racial minority, foreign-born, and poor individual is more likely to early onset death and progression of poor health outcomes if they fail to finish high school. This pushes us to make sure that we have equitable, not e or equal, uh, educational interventions for our kids. The minority status does not necessarily mean poor health indicators. Asian Americans actually have a better health status as compared to the white majority. When you look at racial and ethnic differences, uh, we find that most healthcare providers are actually white. In my profession of athletic training, 80.4% of clinicians are white, while only 4% are black. This is of grave concern as many um, healthcare providers actually learn to learn, learn to provide healthcare on simulators and task trainers that are white. If we look at the picture on the left of CPR mannequins, most of them, if not all, are white. And that means that uh, healthcare providers are being trained on um, simulators that look similar to them rather than their patients they may be seeing. This has also uh, been rolled over into the patient outcomes where we find that African Americans, Hispanics, and Asians were more likely than whites to perceive that they would have received better medical care if they belonged to a different race and that their medical staff judged them based off unfairly based off their race or ethnicity and how well they spoke English. When we begin to understand why these minority populations are uh, have these health disparities, we need to understand that tobacco use, alcohol consumption, and childbirth um, are some of the risk factors. Uh, tobacco use and alcohol consumption is highest in minorities, where we see that African Americans and American Indians have high use of alcohol and tobacco. We also see that childbirth among females uh, 10 to 19 years is the highest among minority populations as compared to the majority populations. When we get into some of these health morbidities, diabetes is one of these that we have a white-black gap. In the United States, mortality from diabetes is 1.7 times as high in American Indians as in whites and more than twice as high in blacks as in whites. Race disparities in diabetes may stem from different reasons such as uh, environments from which African Americans and whites live. When African Americans and whites live in similar risk environments, their health outcomes are actually more similar. In the prevalence of diabetes among Navajo uh, population, 41% among those people ages 65 or older and among North Plain Native American diabetes prevalence is 33% for men and 40% for women. This is of grave concern in terms of the, the risk of these uh, diseases. Um, in addition, worse diabetes control, higher prevalence rates, and higher rates of complication are seen within these minority populations. When we begin to explore cancers, we're able to see that prostate, breast, and colorectal cancer have much higher rates um, uh, in health minorities. We're also able to see that five-year survival rates 
uh, really differ in terms of the population. And so where we will see that black men died of prostate cancer at 2.3 times the rate of white men. Uh, and then the same thing was similar, which uh, colorectal, breast, and prostate cancer had marked increases for the blacks as well. Uh, we're able to also see that residents of poor counties uh, had greater at 13% higher death rate from cancer in men and 3% higher in women compared with more affluent counties, uh, which were above the poverty line. As a whole, African Americans, American Indians, Asian Pacific Islanders, and African American uh, Alaskan Natives, women have lower five-year survival rates than Hispanic whites and non-Hispanic whites um, when it comes to breast cancer. This is of grave concern when we start to explore cancer as a whole. When we look at HIV and AIDS, the U.S. prison system has one of the highest rates of black men. Although blacks only make up about 13% of the entire population, they constitute over 40% of the prison system. In addition, the high proportion of men in the prison system leads to things such as HIV and AIDS. African Americans uh, face higher rates of death from major causes and high rates of HIV infection than their Caucasian counterparts. African Americans in 2010 accounted for 44% of HIV infection cases in, in the country. The rate of HIV among prisoners is five to seven times that of the general population. HIV rates are the highest among black prisoners, and that's why the information for the demographics of the U.S. prison system is so important. Recent increases in racial and ethnic disparity of AIDS diagnosis were observed and may be due in part to the, pay, uh, the care continuum inequalities. Black-white disparities have increased between 2006 and 2013 as a whole. When we explore the aspect of mental health, the percentage of American Indians and Alaska Natives ages 18 and up in the past year of mental illness was 21.2% compared to the national average of 18%. In 2014, 8.8% of American Indians had a co-occurring past year mental and substance abuse disorders as well. The suicide rate among American Indians and Alaska Native adolescents was 31 per 100,000, or 2.5 times higher than the national average. While, again, uh, Asian Americans typically have better health outcomes, older Asian Americans, uh, especially older Asian American women, have the highest rate of suicide of all U.S. women over the age of 65. When we look at the health life expectancy as a whole, the 2015 CDC reports on the 2011 life expectancy data identified that blacks have approximately three and a half years less life, ex life expectancy compared to their white counterparts. And that has uh, this states that the white black gap has been gradually decreasing from when it peaked at seven years in 1993. The CDC also speculates the higher life expectancy of Hispanic individuals is due to something called the salmon effect, in which there is people return back to the country of origin to die due to cultural perspectives that outweigh the health disparities of the minority population. The projected impact is that millennials, meanwhile, who number 83.1 uh, million people, have now surpassed baby boomers at 75 million and are the most diverse generation in history. We're able to see that the projected outcome of what the future face of America is is not what we actually may see currently. Four states, Hawaii, California, New Mexico, and Texas, are, along with Washington, D.C., are now majority minority, meaning that the white population is equal or less than the other subgroups. Nevada, which has 48.5% minority population, is likely to be next. As a whole, public health interventions must occur that are culturally appropriate and evidence-based. We are able to see that policy advancements and community-based prevention have a, a role in what we're doing. Interventions and policies that are designed to take into account the influences of educational attainment, family income, and other socioeconomic conditions on health risk in the entire population might prove to be more effective. Things like the Indiana, Indian Health Services, funded by the NH, NIH and the U.S. government, seek to provide uh, equitable care and improving policy for American Indians. In addition, goal of reducing health disparities and part of the CDC Healthy People 2020 initiative. Programs such as Traditional Foods Project help link diabetes and food consumption knowledge, HIV prevention programs targeted at Latino men, and asthma prevention for Black Americans. As a whole, we must understand that privilege and acknowledge it. It's imperative that white Americans understand their privilege when it comes to health disparities, of, uh, for some reason, the most leading causes of death. While these disparities in health exist as a result of these privileges, including low economic status, physical environment, low median income, and lack of equitable education, lead minority populations to have higher rates. In healthcare, it is vital that 
clinicians and public health officials are proactive to health disparities as they're linked to morbidity and mortality. We must see the access to public health efforts in the form of primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention as a measure to protect the United States, and not as a reduction of access to high quality health care um, that the majority typically receives. If we fail to address these populations and health disparities for these uh, minorities, the research states that the overall health United States population is likely to decline. We must begin to make efforts to not address a disease itself, yet an entire group of racially, di racially diverse populations.